Hey guys and welcome back to the Professor Oak Challenge in Fire Ash. Last time we finished the Unova section and arrived in Kalos with 647 Pokemon in our Pokedex. With only the Vanillite line missing from this point. We start our journey directly in Kalos capital, Lumia City. Since we are here already, let's explore the city in 2D for the first time. The first stop here is Professor Sycamore's lab. He greets us and tells us about his missing Froki. We try to find his Pokemon and while doing so we run into Clement, the local gym leader and his sister. After a very short battle, we can find Froki. And it immediately joins up our team as the first Pokemon in the region. For finding Froki, Sycamore lets us keep it and on top we get a Mega Ring. Yes, Mega Evolution is very possible in this game and I love it. Besides that, we find our second starter of the region here, Fennekin. Now a new exit south of the city opens up and so we enter Kalos Road 4. An iconic fletchling wants to join our journey across the country and after taking it with us we also capture Inke, Bunnelby and Dedenne here. South of Route 4 is Santaloon City and the next gym. Before we enter it though we run into our rival Serena. One short battle later we already hit the end of the section here. So let's evolve what we have so far. Going back to Kanto's Route 1 and grinding Ho-Oh's again, I did evolve my Bunnelby into Diggersby, Fennekin into Brakeson and into Delphox, Froakie into Frogadier and into Greninja, Inke into Malamar and Fletchling into Fletchinder and into Talonflame. With now 661 Pokemon, we can take on the first Kalos gym. Doing so, we earn ourselves the Bug Badge and make our way back to Lumia City to spread the good news. Back in Sycamore's lab we find Chespin, our last starter Pokemon of the region. And after a short battle with Clement, the way to Route 5 is now open. We enter the route and Team Rocket, of course, makes their entrance again. We blast them to the stars and get ourselves some more Kalos Pokemon, like Esper, Pancham, and its evolution, Pangoro, Pumpkaboo and Scatterbug. The next city on our way is Campria Town. The west exit is blocked by a sleeping Snorlax and because we never got the poker flute in Kanto, we now have to get one. North of the city is the town's palace and by going to Route 6, we make our way to maybe get some help with the Snorlax problem. A little bit further along the route is the Perfume Palace area and before we enter the castle, we grab another amulet coin. Inside of the palace, we battle the princess and after that we are granted the Poker Flute. Because we already have Munchlax and Snorlax, I defeat this one. Well, of course after taking its leftovers. I made my way onto Route 7 and there's Wild Swirlix and Spritzy here, which we gladly add to our growing collection. The route is pretty short, so soon after we enter Route 8. Here on the coastline while fishing, I did fish for Clauncher, Skrelp and Dragalgi. A few steps further north is Silagi City. In the local lab here, the two scientists give us the local fossil Pokemon, them being Amora and Tyrant. In the city we can also find the game corner of the region, so we can shop for some more Pokemon. Being here I got myself a Furfru, Gumi, Honedge and Carbic. No roadblock here, so we can directly enter Route 10. This puts us almost immediately into a fight with the local champion, Diantha here. And after beating her in a battle, she gifts us the Gardevoirite. And we use our time here to fish for a binnacle. Among the way to the next city, I ran into Corinna. And one battle later, she returns to her gym. And so, the path north is also free. I grabbed a Kangaskhanite on this route and made my way to Geosenge Town. An NPC here gifts us the Gengarite another NPC, the Blaziken Knight and the Herochronite. Apart from that, when we exit the town, we run into Serena again for another battle. We are now on Route 11. An iconic Halucha joins up our team and we catch a Wild Trevenant before entering Reflection Cave. While making our way through the cave, I caught a Noiva! here and ran into one of the legendary Pokemon of the region, Xerneas. After catching it, I grabbed the Sable Knight and exit to Shalur City. There's a roadblock for this section here, so before we take on the next gym, we evolve Amura into Auroros. 
and our last starter chespin into Quilladin and into Chestnut, Binnacle into Barbacle, Scatterbug into Spooper and to Vivillon, and Esper into Meowstick. Back in Hohen at the Slatepot Market, I bought the Sachet and the Whipped Cream and the Wolf Swirlix into Slurpuff and Spritzy into Aromatizzi, Tyrant into Tyrantrum, Hone Edge into Dual Blade and with the right Evolution Stone into Aegislash. Pumpkaboo into Gowergeist, Neuvern! into Neuvern, Gumi into Sligoo and into Gudra, and Clauncher into Clawitzer. Finally I bred Trevenant to get a fan thump, and with now 701 Pokemon I made my way back to Shalur City to take on its gym. Unfortunately Team Rocket is there as well, and after sending them to space I can now finally get my second Kalos badge. After battling Corinna and her Lucario, I earned myself the Rumble Badge, also the Lucario Knight. After our victory over Corinna, an NPC in the town also gifts us some more Megastones, including the Venusaurite, the Charizardite Y and the Blastoiseite. Unfortunately though, the roadblock is still in its place and since we skipped the Silage Gym, we go back there and face the Gym Leader Grand. Doing so and we are awarded the Cliff Badge and the roadblock in Shalur City is finally gone. Soon after we make our way to Route 12 and take an iconic Gumi with us. Besides that we pick up the Altaria Knight and capture Flabebe, Skiddo, Go Goat and Vanillite. I saved my game and entered Kur Marine City. In one of the houses I found a lucky egg, one can never get enough of those, and one NPC gifted us a Lopar Knight. We take the car to the top of the hill and get ourselves the next Megastone, the Swampertite. Clement waits for us in front of the local gym, but as you know me, I tried out how far I can get, and so I entered Route 13 first. I got myself a Helioptile here and grabbed the Megastones, them being the Steelixide, Tyranitide and Acronite. After doing that, I went further south and found myself in Lumia City again. I spoke with one of the guards and, um, softlock my game. Well. It seems that I wasn't supposed to skip that gym and then be here, but no worries, I just reload my save and... Uh. Well, after doing all of that again, I entered Lumius again and stayed as far away from the guard as possible. In the first house I got a Galatide at the Lysandra Cafe de Garrido site, which is a nice reference, and left the city through the north gate. Now I am at Route 14. We run into Serena another time and are free to look around after a battle with her. There's no Pokemon to get here, so we make our way to Laver City. At the first house the NPC gives me a Medichamite, and the next roadblock in the city tells us that we should check out the Pokeball factory. We cannot enter the gym either yet, so let's do exactly that. Inside of the factory Team Rocket costs some trouble again, of course, and after defeating them we get yet another Master Ball for the collection. This unfortunately don't clear the roadblock, so we should evolve all Pokemon we got in the section. Starting with my Helioptile, after a Sunstone, it evolved into a Heliolisk. Flabebe evolved into Floet and into Florgus. And finally Ice Cream into more and more Ice Cream. And with that, the Unova Dex is also now finally complete. We return back to Kurmarine City and speak with Clement in front of the gym. After taking care of him we can get the next gym badge, and defeating Ramos will get us the plant badge, making it the 4th Kalos badge. The roadblocks still don't disappear and so we make our way to Lumia City and take on Clement again in his gym. This results in us getting the Voltage badge, and now in Laver City we are now finally able to enter the gym there, after a battle with Sawyer of course. The gym itself is a lot like Sabrina's gym in Kanto, and so, after like 20 minutes or so, I found my way to the actual gym leader. Am I the only one who hated that gym? With passion? I hope not. With Valerie defeated, I got myself the Fairy Badge, and now the east exit of the city is accessible. On Route 15 I caught a Klefki, and two NPCs gave me the Sharpedo Knight and Camera Riptide. The next city is Dandemil Town and a fisherman here gifts us the Slowbro Knight. Apart from that we leave the town immediately and find ourselves on Route 17. Nothing for us to do here, so we enter Frost Cavern. I got myself a Bergmite here and found the next legendary, Eveltar. 
After catching it, I picked up the scissorite and left the cave. On the other half of this route, we got the glalitite here and I arrive in Anista after. While being here, I got the pincerite, the absolite and ordinite from Nurse Joy. A lot of megastones. The exit south is impassable for now, so we have to take out the gym leader here before. But before doing that, we enter the Anista sundial and there we find the Pidgeotite, Salamonsite, Metagrossite and Houndoom Knight. After collecting all of that and speak to the gym leader, we evolve the Bergmite into Avalok and make our way to the local gym. Defeating the gym leader, we earn the Psychic Badge and the exit south is now open. On Route 18, we run into Clement once more. Someone took his sister from him and we need to rescue her. This is where I run into the evil team of the region for the first time, Team Flare. We defeated the Grunts and rescued Bonnie. After doing that, I caught a Lit Leo here and because it was so high leveled, I immediately evolved it into Pyro. We crossed Route 18 and now arrived in Curry Way Town. There we meet up with Sawyer again and grab the Skeptilite from the NPC before we aim for the next route. A lane blocks the way and after defeating him, we can enter Route 19. Here we pick up the Aerodactylite and enter Terminus Cave. Team Flare overrun the cave and after we kick their butts and Team Rockets as well, because they are here and why not, we grab the Latias and Latias Knight and continue our journey. Outside of the cave, we run into a lane again and after the battle, we get the Charisotite X. Soon after, we arrive at Route 21, where we run into Diantha again for a battle. Snowbell City, the last city of the region, is not that far away, and so after a short while, I arrived there. In the house north, I found an Alakazite, and afterwards, I made my way directly to the local gym. After defeating Sawyer, we can now enter the building and battle the gym leader Wolfric. I battled him, but instead of giving me the gym badge, he demands us to go look after the Pokemon village first before we can battle again. Well, we have no other choice and we do exactly that and search south of the city on Route 20. Here we run into Serena again and after our obligatory battle, Wolfric is now ready to face us again. Defeating him a second time results in us getting the last badge of the Kalos region, the Iceberg Badge. We exit the city west and onto Route 22, connecting it with Lumia City again. Before we actually arrive there though, we stop to pick up the Mew to Knight X and Y. Back in Lumia City, all we can do now is taking the Kalos Leech. We register and did our first battle, the second battle, third battle and the fourth battle, before we face Sawyer as our fifth match. Our final match will be a lane. And after our match, we find ourselves in a pretty bad situation, as Team Flair occupied the town. Their leader, Lysandre, announces to the city that he took over. We exit the League building and fight our way through the Grunts, only to arrive at the Lumius Gym. At the top of the gym, we have our final showdown with Lysandre. And, as you can imagine, we crush him along with his evil plans. Team Flare is disbanded now, and the people of Kalos thank me for saving their region. We return back to Sycamore's lab, and he gives us the Gachop Knight for our efforts. Back in Pallet Town, the people congratulate us for our efforts in the League once more and we speak with Oak afterwards. He tells us that our mom booked a vacation on Alola and we should head for this region next. Because we are there anyway, we should deliver a Pokemon egg to his cousin Samson. We get a pair of new clothes once more and make our way to the Viridian Blimp service. But instead of going to Alola directly, we need to do a little detour to Kalos again. Back in Lumia City, three NPCs gives us the legendary Pokemon Hooper, Diancie, and Volcanion, along with the Diancetite. Back in Terminus Cave, yet another legendary Pokemon appeared, Zygarde. And of course we catch it too. We take a look at our Pokedex and see that we now own every Pokemon from Kanto to Kalos, having 721 Pokemon registered. And with that, we make our way to the Alola region. Taking the blimp in Viridian City, we arrive at Route 1 in Alola shortly after with us having 117 hours in-game time and 721 Pokemon registered. Now the Alola region awaits us. Thank you so much for sticking around this long. I really hope you liked the series so far. If you do, consider leaving a like. If you have any question, of course, feel free to leave a comment. And of course, as usual, 
the links to the discords of the Professor Oak Challenge and the Fire Ash Discord servers are in the description. Thank you for watching. Until the next time. See ya!